May I have your attention, please? A very warm welcome to you all. My name is Seth Kiri. I'm the curator of, of the exhibition Where Shadows Cross, the Photography of Jim Piscus. The organizer of tonight's event is the Department of Education at the Georgia Museum of Art, so I wish to express my gratitude to Karen Simon, curator of education. To all of you, thank you for joining us for this lecture. This evening, we are fortunate to hear from Jim Fiskas himself. Over the last 30 years, Jim has worked as a photographer on commissions from HBO, Showtime, Netflix, Disney, and numerous other commercial clients. Fulfilling these assignments gave him the opportunity to sharpen his skill as a visual storyteller. While based, while based in Athens, Jim has been maintaining a professional career that regularly takes him to New York, Los Angeles, and London, as well as various remote places around the the globe. His commercial work has been seen by millions on TV and in print, on billboards of major metropolitan centers, and in numerous airports around the world. Throughout all his time, Jim has been creating images for himself, in part as visual and technical experiments subsequently applied to his commercial work, but also as a means of handling life's challenges. <coughs> the title of the current exhibition, Where Shadows Cross, points to the artist's way of creating carefully composed composition, carefully composed scenes, and setting up intricate lighting, but it also conveys the ghostly overtones that conjure tales of the self, even more. The title um, alludes to the shadows watched upon the wall in Plato's famous allegory of the cave, where the prisoners look at the outlines of objects that are being carried in front of a fire somewhere behind them. The real world is outside, the cave and the silhouettes on the wall have very little to do with it. In this exhibition, the shadows take center stage to help us enter and inhabit the scenes invoked by the artist during the last three years. For many of Jim's large compositions, there are typically personal motivations and plots, but they are set in unexpected places, and almost all the actors are people that the artist had just met. Time and time again, something deeply intimate for the artist would be reenacted by strangers, and in the course of this image making, the subjects are enabled to relate to everybody involved in the photo shoot. Jim is not simply capturing images, instead, he is inventing stories casting actors to play characters, setting scenes, fashioning stage sets. All these tales, he says, are choices offered, never forced. Ultimately, these photographs bring to life the stories that, according to the artist, human lives imprint upon the physical world, whether a room, a building, or a river bank. In, in other words, this is a kind of fictional, digital archaeology that aims at unearthing not artifacts, but rather human experiences from the past and from the future. The artist is claiming for his purposes the scores of art historical references in his creations, all of which occupy a communal place in the collective consciousness of human beings. Um, art historical references are something that humans share. Whether learned through schooling or absorbed from popular culture, these iconic images that we all have in common 
binds us and connects us to one another. Also, the artist is so fond of stories told with visual quotations because of their aspirations. They seem to embody the desire to better ourselves and the need to be heard and never be ignored and forgotten. But it is time to hear from the artist himself. Please join me in welcoming G. Christmas. about some of the things that have brought us all here, some of the things that have occurred, and uh, then speak about these images that were made for where shadows cross. Um, I'll to use those. Wait, wait. <laughs> it, it, it's been dropped since. Oh, I have to point the right way. <laughs> There we go. Um, I traveled with my son through the desert a couple weeks ago. We just had the greatest time in the world. Um, it it made me <clears throat> excuse me. It made me think about my father and uh, when I was a kid. This whole photo thing. He he didn't really understand it and he didn't uh, support it. And here's why. And I'm, I'm going to do this because. If you're, you know, my age and do it, you think you're crazy, but you know the thing of, I can pinch your head, I can pinch your head. <laughs> well, if, if you do that and you align the man's head with the seat back there, then moving forward, it's like what a lens does. And I always did these alignments, so my father would turn his mason ring around and I'd like, say, stop! <laughs> he, he just thought I was, you know, being, being a kid, and I was. I didn't know. I didn't really know the difference. That's that's how I did it. Let's see here. Bear with me. I'll learn this one too. Here we go. Okay, I've done my overdrive. So um, <coughs> years later, you know, you're you're in South Korea with a bunch of zombies, <laughs> and, and it all just seems so normal. But it's because there's been a life of this, and. In, in preparing to tell you about these pictures that are up there, I want to tell you briefly about some of the things that happened. When when I went with my uh, my parents to Mexico, there we go. The, these little pictures are the very first <coughs> ones, and it, it, and it was really the truth. My my dad was sick, and my uncle gave me his camera, and those were precious. And we went to this bullfight and. My uncle let me shoot up the roll, and my dad was angry with me later. But afterwards, I explained to him what had happened in this whole fight. And I remembered it kind of sequentially in the pictures, made it valid. And to me, you know, it, it really meant something. It, it, was a, it was a great, just a great experience. And, and from then on, I kind of always wanted the camera. They, they didn't really let me do it. You know, they didn't let me have it. So I'd run through everything. Things kind of freaking me out. It's not good. Point it, point it towards the, the back wall. Hey, well, I'm communicating back there? Yes. There you okay. Go. <laughs> look, I'm under control now. So, my cousin, look, my cousin sent this picture to me last week, and it's so funny. And this is in high school, like in 10th grade. And I remember this uh, figured round thing, white and black. And I, re I remember exactly doing this. And he, he was jumping to try to touch the the contrail, and I was trying to keep the birdhouse along the side, and I thought the white and black were the same, but it needed the white soap to balance. And you know, that's kind of kind of strange to get the exact feeling of whatever that was then, you know. It, that was a long time ago, but 
I've always had a camera around. I've, I've always used it, and uh, I've always loved it. This is after the high school thing. I studied with this man Jim Newberry at East Texas State, and um, he he was a great teacher. He was really literally a teacher. He later came and functioned as a mentor, but. What I saw for the first time were pictures like this. He, he, Jim Newberry studied in Chicago under Aaron Siskin and Meyer White, many of those really famous photographers, but I hadn't really seen this and didn't understand that it was, you know, in, intentional. I thought that someone just took a picture of something, and I, I slowly realized that this man was finding shapes, you know, unseen shapes. It could be torn paper or a, or a telephone pole, but Somehow he found things that, that made patterns to him. And also, Michael, Michael White, you know, he, he was hiding shapes. He wasn't just finding, he was hiding them. And he was doing repeated patterns. And I just wasn't really familiar with all this kind of thing. But, you know, where a, a shape is, you know, duplicated, and he has triangles. and. There's a lot of ways to look at this stuff, you know. But I started, I started kind of realizing that for the first time that they're doing it on purpose. They're seeking these patterns and shapes, and they they try to combine all of these hidden elements within what looks like just a a complete normal, you know, snapshot. But it's not. You probably spent a lot of time finding it. It. As the education thing went on, um, I was introduced to Joel Peter Whitman, and through this facility, I actually had the great honor of meeting him and hosting him at a party that uh, was given for him. But when I saw this, I, I just had no idea what was going on in this person's mind, you know? And I, I realized that he was just doing his own thing, you know, just completely doing his own thing. But what's really going on here, you know, and, and really why? But I, I just kept looking back and I realized that, you know, fragmented but purposeful, it was whatever story that man wanted to tell. It, it was what he was, it was what he was working on. So the, the thing that occurred was during the school time, um, I, I just had a great, luxury of studying photographs. And I started, Andrea, I swear I pushed it once. <laughs> I, I started to uh, make some, you know, of my own. There. I'm, I'm going to have someone else drive for So, the, the thing that was occurring was that there were patterns and shapes to be had, you know, things things reflected or, or, you know, they take you back in the frame and in the back you have a payoff, but really what you also have is these, these vanishing, I can't handle this, I'm, I'm, I'm going to sit in the front row and do it. Point right at it. Okay. There are angles within these pictures. A person with, you know, with lighter skin obviously stands out, but these triangles and such were intentional. He was placed there, and I was trying to get him to interact with, you know, with the scene. These pictures were, uh, they were done in Texas, and it was a series of saloon owners. It was the first time that I really started to deal with people because prior to that, I was taking, you know, pictures of things or shapes, and there was no interaction. And the real, the real truth is that in person, I, I can be very shy, not shy, but just, get wigged out or whatever, and I, I don't do so well, and when I began to deal with people with a camera, I was not like that, because in those situations, we were in a different world. I, I did these pictures with Jim Newberry, and uh, went off to be an assistant, you know, and I think about being an assistant was, I worked for so many different people who did so many different types of photography, and I saw how they were successful, and I saw how they weren't. Oh, can you not hear me back there? Um, 
the, the thing of leaving what you know in life and going on the road with a bunch of crazy people for years, it, you know, it's, it's just a big, a big change and, and you start to realize that maybe the way you live is normal only to you, you know? Maybe, maybe these people who do this stuff are actually normal. We traveled, you know, everywhere. I, I, uh, I went to uh, New York for the very first time when I was in that phase and went back many, many times since. I think my back is dead or something, man. I'll drive. I'll drive. Oh, I'm going to drive. It's not going. I'm trying. All right, it takes two people to uh, advance the slide. I'm going in here. All right. <laughs> Look, so after assisting and location scouting and producing, you know, you put yourself in a position where you're accountable to someone and it can be really stressful. So other people maybe assisted and started to shoot and they went at it with what they had. But by the time I shot, I was equipped, so to speak. So these pictures started to have things hidden within them. And so this is a picture of two men playing poker, but there's a camera dutch and the guys follow over their shoulders, so it makes the appearance that the uh, shot glass is at a lean. So I found myself going through all of these situations in order to feature a shot glass. And the thing that occurred was I finally realized, man, these people are paying me money and I get to light how I want and use gear that I haven't used and I get to hide stuff in these pictures. You know, how fun, how fun can it possibly be? You know? it, it was just the greatest thing. I couldn't, I couldn't stop doing it and I had cameras with me at all times. You know, it, it was just fun. After an image like that was made, I, I went to New York and I worked with a man named Bill Stockland, and so rather than it being a saloon owner, it was a guy like this, you know. But we're our saloon owner. Go back one for the rents. Let's look at this. In any of these, you know, go, go back one more to the previous guy. So in, in a deal like this, I had almost no lights. And I have one light, actually, the guy light. So, I would light a person, and if there was another person, I wish that I had more, and I didn't really have it. And I started to really wish that I could do things in pieces. So as we go forward here, suddenly instead of knocking around with a single dying light and get so tripod, I got whatever I want, you know? <laughs> so the pictures began, people began to be cylinders. Rather than people, they began to be a circle. And how do you light it? You know, you you utilize the shadow side to to show three dimensional form. But in his eyes, you can see that there's three pings in his right eye, camera right eye, and there's two showing in the other. So we know that there's three lights in front of him. And this picture was with with, with eight. And when you light with certain lighting techniques, you, you can make this highlight on this forehead shine, you know, and to bring it forward. They, they became very sculpted and purposeful. Let's go. So, after a picture of like the Jay-Z thing goes down, you know, ESPN and everybody thinks, oh, well, it's safe, and so they ask me to do NFL guys. And I'm not, I, you know, I'm not against football by any means. But uh, I don't spend my time chasing it down. And uh, I told them that I would do this, but the, I wasn't going to do it with football helmets and stuff. You know, they needed they needed to wear what I wanted, and so they agreed. Strangely, and we went to the Bethlehem Steel Plant in Pennsylvania, and we worked with these guys, and they thought it was really really cool. But guess what? In this case, I thought it should be kind of blue. So we're developing here through these changes. And you know, my, my favorite thing were like the Northern European 
paint or see it. We just always have to see, have a feel of things. But the illustrators and the painters were able to alter perspectives. And so, in, in an image like this, Norman Rockwell, who I studied a lot, he kind of irritated me because he was so sweet and everything, but <laughs> man, he had it going. You know, and later I found, I don't know the photographer's name, but there's pictures where, you know, the running girl has her foot on the book. And like Elton John and Bernie Taupin, you know, Elton didn't talk about Bernie very much. And this guy didn't mention the fact that his illustrations were based on photographs. When I realized that, my dad asked me to do his portrait, so I practiced. If you look at the plane of this table, we're looking slightly on top of it, but if you look at this table, it would be down in the floor. You know, it's, it's much, much lower. So all that stuff of you know, the pitch you're good, make it bigger and smaller. It all started to work. And I realized that when we see something close, our eyes wide, and when we look at the Nathan Mindy back there, our, our eye becomes like a telephoto lens. And if you comprehend that in any way, then you can start to place things within a rectangle. It, it's, not, it's not true, but you know, you accept it. That's when the layers begin, right? So this stuff starts happening, you know? And it's just great. They asked if I'll be ludicrous, and I said, yeah, if he'll wear his hair down, I will. And he agreed and said, I'm going to have a monkey too. More <laughs> and that monkey's real. And it left upon him a couple of times. And it was just, a, it just like the craziest, most fun thing in the world. But if we, I don't have a really pointer here, but if we look across this frame, there, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of shape. So if we start at the foot of the monkey on the box, go right through, you know, the girl and across, right through, it's, it, it's forming an, a, an X, literally, it's, a, it's an X. And as we go through some of these other pictures, those shapes are what we're talking about. There's places where you put someone where you can see his outline clearly so you don't have to spend time to, to figure out what it is. And it, if you do that successfully, they just become, rather than a person in there, you almost don't see them, they're a conduit to an overall picture. Let's see what we have here next. After the uh, layering thing, it became, this was called The Unfortunate Moment of Misunderstanding. It's a story about a man who did the same thing over and over. And he, was, he had to face a decision. And it was a 12-frame novella. He called it a novella. But all the wardrobe is made. You know, this is a great fun thing. 12 frames of this is a lot. But I'm just trying to get a flow through the whole image, yet contain it within a rectangle. It's contained. It doesn't get out of control. It's super fun to dress sets, you know, so at this point, styling and colors are becoming more important. You know, a red bag has great weight where a black thing you wouldn't see. Colors start to uh, create balance. Like, for example, this giant target. You know, gives you a point to go to, in my mind. Uh, it's, uh, they were always interspersed with uh, portraits, you know, the wider seats. It was almost like an editorial assignment where you want to uh, establish where you are and then show who they are and then show what they do. You, you almost have to do your wides and your tights. But these things were stories, and this story was that I had realized that in my life I had made a mistake, a, a big one. And this was the 11th of the 12 frames, and on the 12th frame there were two versions where either he accepted that reality or he threw the cigarette button in the uh, trash barrel and flamed out and walked out the door, which kind of was the second choice, you know, that, what I made. But I think that 
having this outlet for a guy who lines people's heads up. It gave me a place to, you know, to work. Let's go forward. There were situations like this image where, you know, I met these guys. We built a set, a wall, and they showed up. And they, uh, you know, they said, what are we doing? Like, well, we're going to do a shoe shine today. And they, oh, you know, felt funny about it. Maybe we went around the corner and these, these women were practicing, you know. And uh, Andre says, oh, no, crochets, like Hugo Mouse. And he just rattles off all this train of thought. He says, what do you think, Big? Big says, the lamppost is cool. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the point of the picture with them was that they're, they're featured equally, yet they're so completely different. And what I was saying that, you know, in the culture, it's like some women can be objectified. They can be used as an object, but in this case, these objects actually bear the light. So these are, these are some of the lights that are used to light these guys. These are active lights. I, I later learned from being around them that they're actually really smart and cool and uh, I maybe mislabeled. But so from a job like that, then it becomes HBO. You know, they, they're going to do idle while. And of course, you know, Al Cass says, let's do that. You know, Jim, the first one is because the shoe shine thing was presented to HBO by their uh, director. So we want to do it in this style. So it started to spread, you know, you're building friends with, with people outside of your normal world. Not them, but the rest of them. They become super involved sets, you know. And uh, in this set, it was actually too clean, and, and I stopped and told everybody to go out in LA to the parking lot and go pick up trash. <laughs> and, you know, just threw it in and work. But they're, they're complicated, you see. In, in doing these, my point in showing them is, is just to say that it's a progression, but that it starts very simply. And you don't notice, but it's getting harder and harder. And so in this job, I think there were seven or eight executions, seven or eight big sets. And you're motoring talent through and wondering if they're going to cooperate and trying to you know, have to be a chameleon to be hard or happy or whatever it is. Even though you just really kind of just want to go cry. <laughs> you know, like, oh my God, I can't think of the long she's going to go. While those jobs are going, you know, some pretty powerful people. And I always would try to do some level of personal portrait, something to get them out of the out of the performance role and you know become a person a person with me. I liked it. They liked doing it too. There's always one extra minute. So these things started happening. Here's the worldwide uh, Levi's campaign, and they. So you can do this wherever you want. We just require something white, something white. And so we went to the salt and sea and just did a bunch of beautiful shapes. You know, listen to a lot of loud music. You know, whatever the feel was for each one of these. This is a abandoned hotel. Let's go forward. These uh, these images. At this point, they were asking me how to rather than telling me what to do. And so this is a riser like a. Uh, High school auditorium seat that, pe that mannequins and people are stacked upon. So if you do it with mannequins, it's just you know static and strange. But if they're actually moving around, moving through it, well then Claire's more engaged with what she's doing, and it, and it becomes real. Let's go again. Now we see some hidden clues within all of this food and these gestures about what those characters do and I have to understand them and read scripts. There's a lot that goes into it. You do not show up and you take a picture like this. You work for you know, a couple of weeks with your producer and stylists and all of that and give ideas and, and you know, you're on set. Man, it's, it can be crazy. In this, I turned around and there were you know 120 people there because all these guys brought their publicists, the kids, and, you know, it's a zoo sometimes. It's supposed to be a closed set where you work. Sometimes it just gets out of control and people stop. Here's the last picture in this section, and uh, 
these things are uh, happening now in Korea, and the lights that we had weren't the lights that I asked for, and we lit this thing with a bunch of tungsten lights, and instead of having super set design, it's got some carpet pad. And it's like an Irving pin set, you know, triangle carpet pad behind them, so it's gray, and had the hands reach through. There, there's no digital, it's a picture, it's a photograph, these were lit. So, uh, as I got better and better with scanners and computers and all that, I tried to, I tried to do it less and less and make real in-camera pictures. But the thing that happened was that in, in something like that, I do stuff like that all the time. <laughs> it's not on anything. But um, here's yet another idea gone, you know, another thought. These come from personal tests. These come from things that happen in Athens, you know, it's practice. So let's go forward. So it, it really it really is a butt weight, you know, this commercial thing. It's like, well, wait a minute. I'm working when I'm not working to try to learn how to do something new all the time. And then I show it. So here, here's one short example of what occurs over and over. This, this woman is named Reese. And Andrea and I decided that we would practice with tin types and do the whole thing. And it takes a lot of work to actually pull them off. And uh, this is in the driveway. We, we worked through and ended up with a portrait like this. Then the Hunterian in London sees these and they agree that I should come photograph some of these things. Now these are, for me, these are photographed because of the glass, you know, it's beautiful glass for these items. And it, it was an amazing thing to me to actually go and see and handle it and do this. It was, it was great. But the next one is what happens. You see, somebody sees it. They ask me to do it. But they, you know, if we were to do one now, it's like Andrew would go in there for seven minutes and rush out with the plate for two minutes and expose it and rush it back. And, you know, you get three or four of them in session. But they've seen this work and they say, do you have blanks? So now I can't really want to do a bunch of tin types because I've soiled it. So my commercial work has been the greatest thing in the world because I've been everywhere and I've seen a lot of stuff. But it's also been a situation where it's a trade, man. You know, it's your idea for money. And once your idea is used, it's ours. That's the way it feels. And I willingly give it up. But as we entered this time period that we've all recently made it through, I just kind of stopped and thought, you know, maybe I'm a director here or a set designer or all. But I don't know if I can really take a picture anymore. You know? Like I can take it with 17 people, but I, I, I don't want to do this right now. And so I began to work on the Shatters Cross. And um, I'll pause for a second on that because um, if anybody wants to ask anything, this is not a formal setting, and I'll answer you and stop talking about this stuff. So, at any point, ask me. Just have one question. Yeah. Is video okay? Well, since they're already doing it, I'm not going to make them stop halfway. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm I don't care. I'll say something wrong sooner or later. Um, yeah. Some of the um, images prior, particularly the one with uh, Jay Z, uh, now that eyes, was that something done on set with uh, lenses? Or was that being touched afterwards? No, the, that image, in all of these images, actually, like right now, you can see that I have one light source. I've got one thing, right? In my eye, there's one. You, you can tell how people have lit things by the number of lights that are reflecting on shiny objects. And you can also tell when there's two shadows, which that would be a shadow cross, you see. These are the images that were done over the time period that uh, us and Kieran referred to. And I'll tell you a little bit about how they were done. But I want to I tell you some, some rules. Um, 
the deal was if I were to go out into the real world and try to make pictures, that I would not impact people. I would not coerce or push the people that I met into doing anything that I wanted. That I would show them and tell them, and if they joined, then that's great. And I would show them where to go or what to do, but I wouldn't tell them to run down that hall hallway in terror. I, I would show them where to go and play music and create a scene, see? I tried to let people be themselves even though I was controlling everything else. I, I didn't use the same lights twice. You know, some people would use the same Octobank over and over and sure it's consistent, it looks great, but the point of finding these is they're, they're places, first of all. Let's, let, there's, a, there's these points within us. This briefly is what we should look for. When you go and look at these pictures, look for this stuff. It begins with a significant place. I've, at this point, gathered some gear, loaded it, taken off, and I have a list of thoughts. And I drove along with one person and drive, in, you know, randomly to the west. The rule was we were not crossing the Mississippi River. So in the evening when the sun came down, we would go north or south. And I realized that you know, we don't spend a lot of time just out doing things that we aren't comfortable with. So there's structures within these, there's, there's triangle shapes, there's perspectives that are implied and some that aren't true. There's also the light, you see. Every, every place, and this is the most important, every place found is special as if something did happen. And usually there's some interesting light source that happens. So let's go, go forward one. Let's see where we are. All right, go back one. We'll look at the, the final piece first. So there's a lot of things going on in here. I don't have a pointer anymore. I have, I have a pointer. Right. Oh, oh, here's your name. Okay, thank you. So look, this picture is much like the guy with the shot glass. The shot gla glass has just gotten bigger. And seeing this place, I wanted to make a green anvil and I wanted to contain it. Contain it as if you know, it's maybe a diorama of natural history museum or screen or something. The other things that are going on is that there's repeated patterns and shapes. So these distances, you know, they're similar all the way around. And then with the lens, I'm attempting to make this go straight down rather than towards you. Wide lenses force things down. And I'm trying to make this whole thing look flat, that three dimensional. Let's go forward. So this is the place, there's nothing to it, you know. It's just, it's just a simple outfit. It was covered in grass, and this is after it's been cleaned, you know, but it's just a strange thing on the side of the building. Go forward. Um, this is a little bit about this man, you know. I'm hanging out with him. These don't happen. We don't show up and take so much picture that afternoon. You find the place. You read the light. You find out what time of day it is, and while that's going on, you're finding props or having lunch with people and, and exploring. By the time we get out to this, and he's looking through the back of this camera, we're familiar with one another. He, he's comfortable, he, he knows me, and I kind of know him. I'm showing him what we do. By the way, there's no computers on set. All this stuff is shot, and we leave, and it's backed up on the computer, but we're not editing or shooting on set. Let's go. So look, basic methods is that if, if this entire thing is in shadow, this entire uh, green anvil is a black shadow, really, I can light it. I can make it green by lighting beneath the key light, the key light being a street light. Go forward. The idea originally in this is that this man was to stand in this section here. You know, it's like some triangulated Irving pen set. Yeah, it's got all this other business going. And he began to see his, his own shadow. And in all of these pictures, something personal happens, right? Otherwise, it's just a picture. And in this, in this case, the uh, police came. The man was nervous. And he said to me, hey, when I was a kid, we came over here. 
and those those guys gave us such a hard hard time. And he was watching them, and they, they kept coming around. And so this this became rather than a portrait of a man in front of an alcove, it became you know half my story and half his. That's good. Here's how they're edited. Luca, my daughter, and I look through and cut out pieces and tape them down like it's a game. And if it fits like a puzzle and looks good, then you know maybe it works. So it's good. In the end, you know, we have the situation that had I photographed him just as well, but within it would be a different picture. When he told me that he uh, had trouble, I changed the shadows and uh, made it a choice. And so the point in all these pictures is that, is that you have a choice. If, if they're successful, they're stories, but there's really not any conclusions. They're just a situation for you to interpret. I was fortunate to be with him. He, uh, he explained to me what his deal was when this one began. This one. This one was on the road and things started to change. It really felt good. We, I'm going to do three of these pictures. So, this thing was halfway through, and this was the time when actually uh, the Georgia Museum of Art had seen some of the work and they asked if I would you know, show it. And it was really an intimidating thing. And you know, I've kept my game outside of this town, I haven't ever done it this and I felt really exposed. And the reason was that these are stories, you know. These, these are private things and I did not mean for them to be shown like this. But at this stage, this frame is divided by the teeth. And so within each is an independent section or act. And this one was to lie somewhat Gauguin like down in this panel, you see. It's preconceived. It's not. It's not a day up. I'll show you a, a few art historical references, but this was the piece before any location was found. And honestly, now that we're here, that's how I felt. <coughs> but that's the reason for this, is I felt that I had accepted this incredibly important, valuable burden. You know, burden. Because up to this stage, I've taken pictures for fun, and now I have to finish. And so I had to get across the river, right? That's, that was important. The picture is based on that. You know, there's a distance here. The person needs to do something or hears something and has to go, but we're not certain exactly, or at least I'm not, I'm not certain of what's going on. But I really like that shape. And I really like that balance, and I really like that it's a triangle. Gosh, within a triangle, you know, he just couldn't resist, did he? He has to do some other things to take us on in. It's, it's beautiful, you know, I want to do a picture of that well. In this picture, one of the four elements, see we have this man and son, we have a boat, we have a woman, but we also have nature, and I've always loved these uh, Leonardo illustrations. And I felt that the place itself was was beautiful. It should be featured. Let's see. So with my family, we searched all over the place. Search, search, search. You just you just can't find them. And these guys were able to go with me some. So this was the place. This is where they were this real river. This is where they were going to cross. It's been decided upon now. So I've seen it, and I'll go back and draw it. So, uh, look, you know, we've got some people somewhere in the bushes. We have a boat, something's going on, and I have a woman, and, and here's the plant. And, you know, a creeper or something, your boat, or a lounger. But after you've taken a picture of the, of the snapshot, you start drawing it. Work on wow, how can I use a lantern? You know, I want to use a lantern. I want to do one candlelight picture. One, one candlelight, real, real hard. Draw it and work through it. And it, it doesn't work. So it's a little fluid. We we went back to this place, and in the time that I was gone, it had been flooded. And everything was different. You know, like the day I was just totally different. 
and it, it rained so heavily, and it just, it, it was intense. Jonathan Bragel um, was shocked twice, and I walked into a tree, and broke my foot, had a bloody nose, and it's up in the bank. You know, it's very physical for two people to load all this stuff, because what you can't see is that there's lights and cables and things around here, and I'm trying to light to the situation. I, I'm not trying to use my formula trying to allow each of these locations to dictate the light. The light my light must go beneath the light that exists. So let's go forward and see. In, in, in it, that's one candle. There are lights that are going in, in various places, but they have to be less than a candle, otherwise I'm, I'm overpowering them. It's very dim. The woman who's seated begins to rise. When she rises, the boy looks at her. Up to this point, I'm shooting four things at once, a plant that has kind of like wings, something crazy in the nose, eyes, all sorts of weirdness is going on with that plant. But this is normally its own in advertising, its own single shoot. And this, the next one is as well, and then she is, and things are sequenced. But in this situation, I wanted to try to do some live shots, you know, live, what really would happen. It, it's, it's difficult and strange, and it's, it's so much fun. Here we, we've said that we will not cross the Mississippi River, and of course, we, we have. Now we're in Louisiana, you know, looking back. But I traveled with my mom, and we went back to this place and it's a ferry crossing, and it had all sorts of meaning to my family and such, but, you know, a ferry crossing is where things happened back then. People were getting away, were going to. It was a lot of love and hate, you know. Something strange happened there. But it's real powerful, and it's really plain. It's advanced. So I'm there with my mom, and I'm thinking, this needs to be a two-frame deal, you know. Two stories, two different things. And she stands in, and we leave. Now look. That some of this stuff is real private, and in this case, I overheard a conversation, right? A conversation that, that made me uncomfortable, and I, I sat, witnessed it, you know, face to face, and, and I held, held my tongue, you know, but it bothered me. And so much like the other things that have been written down, I just made a little list of how I felt and what I thought, you know? And I left, so let's see what's next. I started to study, you know, the art thing again. In pictures, you know, it's about possession, containment, control. It's usually about slavery or about women. You know, these, these people, one time after another, have been held back. This one's a slave in the market, you know, that's what she is. But, you know, this guy's got a big, big staff now, don't we? So, you know, there's a story developing. Let's, let's go forward. This one's beautiful. Look how hard that was across. But yet again, the person is being hidden. It's moved. So, when you go out to a place like this, and you don't know these people, and you start to explain the scenario, they either are with it or they're not. You know, Everybody was with it. If you notice, from the camera angle, these items are stacked. All I have shown up out here with is a man with a net, some tin and a fire, some funny stumps that I've cut, and, you know, just four, four things. So what do you do to fill the frame? Well, you shoot super, super wide. You know the trick where somebody's nose gets real, real big, that's why the nose trick, the nose gets big. Shoot really wide and stack stuff up. Fill the frame, fill as much real estate as you can, and do so by bringing one character forward. Let's go. We work through. You know, it seems normal. Keep rolling. I'm behind. I didn't realize so what. There's just some stuff that happens, you know. We afterwards you're hanging out. This is actually my uncle. These people had the greatest time in the world, and nobody really knew what was going on in most of bands. Yeah, they love it, they look. Yeah. Yeah. Did these people know each other? 
Those people did know each other. Yeah. These, um, well, these two girls, these two women did. And the little boy with the sword, um, he's her son, and we didn't know the boy was coming. The only reason the sword was there was uh, this little wooden thing was my kids, and we took it to whack bumblebees. You know, there's so many bugs. But go forward, and, and, and here's the picture. Later, when you look, you know, this to me is a, a complete story. You, you can choose who you identify with, maybe. But you imagine your own, I hope, you know, based on your experience. I, I, I told mine. I'll go really fast through some pictures just to show you some of the insanity that occurs in this stuff. This is what you're looking for. This is an awesome thing, man. You can't really see it very well here, but look at the angles of his feet and his legs and his hands and the barbed wire and his awkward stance. It's really peculiar. The camera's Dutch left so that the, uh, the horizon line is off, but he leans right. And then to isolate this dog, there's some smoke. Let's go forward and show us. It's funny and good. This is the vehicle. We're looking for pictures like that. Let's get it. Let's keep, keep moving. We're out of time. Did it not work? You have it, but I'm I didn't do it. So look, here's the trailer. We go in the trailer. We load all this gear. It's hot with biking pants. No? Two advancers. I'm sorry, guys. I, I can't handle this thing. Are you doing it or am I? No. I'm going back. All right, here we go. We loaded some gear into the into the trailer. We, we have no destination. I'm feeling really awkward and weird. Like, what in the hell am I doing? You know, it's it's actually a pandemic. We practiced. In this case, totally failed. This failed. But we practiced, you know, and then we head off on the road and you find these places and suddenly there's like these patterns that are occurring and they're actually beautiful. It's nothing, but it's great. And these men, look, these men within the space, it, it just becomes this beautiful thing. But the point of this is that I'm trying to photograph that guy in front of the church and I have, this is my uncle. My uncle says, yeah, man, you got to photograph the sheriff to get the the backing, and what I want to do is do the best picture here, but it becomes complicated. So, advance. Here we are photographing this man. It's very simple. It's it's just very very simple. It's like a light in an, in an environment. I guess here I'm showing the guy that the fence is stable and that he can jump around, you know, if he needs to. He comes, he, he comes in, it's a very, very quiet thing. This, this dog just walks right through. These are the type of things that I wanted to do. There's an abandoned cemetery, and there's stories and reasons for this. You know, it, it was interesting. This is not, this is not in this, in the room up there. Here's a couple more. This, this place, you would walk right past it, you know? I would. But with a camera, it, it changes. Look, let's look at it. In this picture, we have a you know a dark triangle, and, and we have a light triangle. The, the woman is seated in a in a bench, and she's holding my hand. You know, I hold her hand, and she's taking her own portrait with a release. And I'm holding her hand, and I'm guiding her so that she's just got like this little crown of light, you know, like little angel or whatever she is. It's almost as if this is a second chance, you know. It, it, that, so it, mean, it meant something. And here is a, a place that's a greenhouse where eight railway lines come together and you know something happened. There was a judge, it was a uh, quality control room in cotton in, you know, years ago. But it doesn't look the way it looks, you know? And so we're in here and we're laying this thing out and I want to show you something. It's, uh, I'm attempting to make a shape and another shape. And another, you know, I'm trying to make an oval and I want to make a slash like that sign. Let's see. So look. 
This is, you know, this is brutal. <laughs> Look at her pointy shape and opposing shape. This guy's tail and his shape. These plants up to here, to here, to now, and back down. I was in Alabama, in the middle of nowhere, and the, in some of these stories, you know, it's, there's repeated male behavior and such, right? So when times get tough, you know, the men just do something and uh, go back home. Men do things without really necessarily thought, and women are always very aware of this. And so, you know, they, they, you think that they're not like this, but they are. So when, when these shapes form an oval, it's, it's the pieces of like what a relationship can be and the, the slash mark that goes across. I mean, it's, how it's at an angle. There's a lot of stuff going on, but it's on purpose. It's not accidental in any way. It's after 6.30. You like oh, late? All right, we'll rip fast. <laughs> this woman, I did not know this woman, and I went back to her place four times to try to make this photograph. Over and over, trying to figure this thing out, drawing it and everything. Here's her vehicle. We realize yet again wide lens. Look at the distance from the front of the car to the back. This lens is wide. It makes things look kind of off in the, in the first place. So the final night it, when I go, it's, it's snowing here in Athens. Last year, I think it was. It snowed. And my family was in Highlands, and I wanted to be there. And I didn't feel like doing this. And I, I went out and I called Ken Manry and asked him to help me. And we lit this thing, you know, and just flip lights and a couple of things. But within this picture, you see, this fence line follows the green grass in the edge of the building. The, the light makes this shadow lights within the wheel well, but it also makes a shadow of the car on the wall so that you can see the color temperature. There's a, you know, a lot of things going on, and if you do what I did with water bottle and kick it, it it's off. You know? It's very specific, it takes time. When she came out, we did four frames. She, she stepped out, and there were four frames made. One more quick look, a couple locations. This place is just the strangest little room, and I had to shoot at this thing. I, sh I shot this over and over. I couldn't get it right. So go forward. After shooting it the first time, I've drawn it. This is a declaration of where my lights are and my mirrors and windows. And, you know, the guy over there. But you gotta practice. You gotta figure out how this stuff works, you know? Out and have an ice cream with kids and test. Well, here they are, they show up. You know, these are the people who are gonna be in this, and I do know these two. <laughs> Those are the fans. If you'll look, it, it, when you see this picture, I want you to notice that on the right, um, there's okra husks, <coughs> and there's seeds. It's a, it's a symbol of what might come in the future in this picture. It's these comforting, beautiful flowers on this side. On the other side, there's these gods and this wind. This person has, is surrounded. Let's look at, and, and notice how she covers herself. She's covered, you see. It's the same shapes. It's a different story. These, this art, his, these historical references play a part in all of this. Because you want to illustrate or, or show similarities. It looks just like a random thing, but, you know, this floor is the same shape as this, but we want this to be less. We want you to go up in, in the frame. You've got a million triangles. You know, you have opposing shapes. You've got, you know, there's many of them. And in time, you know, you can figure all this out. Let's go to the end. This last thing, I think we'll just click through so nobody's late. Let's go. Here, here, oh, be quiet, and you just look at these. These are what they are. These are the images that were shot for 12, 15. Stop there for a second. I want to say this to you. Look, this is great fun. What this one is all about is here is a red panel that occupies a certain amount of space. Here is a black one that does the same thing, and a white one, and the base. And then these are stacked to look as if it's a hand, going to be a hand. I wanted to get the man in there 
to see if, if he would touch. It's all prepared in advance. We've seen him. We've seen an oval. This this picture, I mean, you know what's going on. So we're saying that all of this is going to a vanishing point, yet these guys are blocking it. Within the picture, there's funny things. He doesn't know there's a base. I'm having him scoot his butt down. He doesn't know why he thinks it's funny, but I'm making his foot big. Look how big it is. It's bigger than the head. But also, by scooting his butt down to this chair, I'm aligning his knee so that if you glance, perhaps it looks as if it's hers. It's fun. You figure that one out. That's just a, that, that's a great story. This picture is in here because I didn't want to stop doing this. I, wanted, I didn't want to work. And this man asked me to do his picture. I told him I have weird gear and found locations. And he's like, yeah, go in there where there's this band and sleep him off. And so we went in there. And he laughed and he said, what are you doing? I said, I'm making an ice cream cone. Curve your back. So honestly, you know, here's your scoop. And here's your scoop. I'm, I'm trying to not let them be people, but let them be shapes. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. So, we're out of time. I guess I told you too many things, but. Uh, where, where is that? That's, that's when, in Mexico City. That's when I had the camera. And I was a little bitty kid, you know? <laughs> Put it in there because it started there and it, it's, still, it's still part of it. You know? it's, it's all part of it. Um, I, I tried to I tried to make some stories that maybe people could look at and the person next to you would differ in opinion. You know, maybe they see it a different way. They identify with a different person. Um, I, I worked real hard on it, and uh, my family covered for me. My wife did, took care of my kids while I was gone over and over. And not only did it, but actually encouraged it. And it just took a long time, and I worked alone. I was alone a lot. Andrea is, is with me, and sometimes Jonathan was, but it's a solitary act. And, and so I've never really done this. In, in closing, I, I felt like if I showed three or four of these pictures, it's going straight to LA, and that I would be asked to shoot it. I would ask to shoot it, to shoot in that style. So I didn't do it. You guys have seen, seen them in there, and kind of nobody else has. And, uh, Everything in them is on purpose and controlled, so good or bad, it's on me. And this is what I try to do. Great job. Yeah.